Alan, is one of the riggers that the uh, air show industry is particularly fond of. You spent an awful lot of time with the air show and uh, also with the skydiving industry talking to folks about necessary care and feeding of shoots and, and so forth. There's been some big buzz lately because the elder repack cycle that was not as long as we'd hoped it would be has now been extended to 180 days. That's correct. Now, what's that mean to us? Well, it means a lot. <laughs> First off, it's a lot of people say, well, I'm a parachute rigger. Why would I want it to extend? It's really a safety issue. And uh, it's very important the newer material should not be handled as much. Obviously, it's going to make it a lot easier for particularly glider pilots or air show pilots. They might be able to make it now through the entire season with one repack. But the less handling you do on the modern equipment, the better off uh, you are. I did my homework about three years ago at an international convention, and I asked approximately 30 countries from around the world who had been using 180 days with the same American equipment like the softy here or, or whatever else is out there for 10 or 15 years. And we've discovered that the newer material should not be handled as much. It can distort the fibers, the coatings on them. We have smaller and smaller parachutes now because of the special coatings. It, it allows less air to flow through them. So I worked on this, and as of uh, November the 19th, they, it was the last time it was published in the Federal Registry, and it will become law uh, very help, uh, on December the 19th of this year, just a few days down the road. And so you'll be able to go to a 180-day repack cycle. So save money and technically be safer. Absolutely. I mean, I, I couldn't go out there and say, I want this from the FAA because I want it. It had to be a reason. And the reason was it was a safety issue, and they examined it. It took them uh, a fair amount of time to go through the bureaucracy, but uh, they recognized that the industry knows what we're doing. And so I'm very pleased with it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. What can be done in the process of utilizing these chutes in between the repack cycles to make sure that they're handled correctly. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of issues here that I'm finding out that are really being ignored. These are not expensive seat cushions. The, probably the biggest thing that you can do to, to preserve the life of your parachute, and pretty much in the industry in the United States, we're looking at 20-year service life on a piece of equipment. That's the, the harness container and the parachute that's inside. That's everything. Most of this equipment in Europe all U.S. equipment sold in Europe and, and Australia and New Zealand, they have laws there that say you have to remove it in 15. Mm -hmm. So how do we make it last 20 years? We found 25 was on the high side. We started to see problems. The problems we see most were UV damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I just gave a presentation at a glider facility in another st state in Texas, and they were putting them on the wing of the glider to help hold them down. Well, they're accumulating UV damage. And you can't see it with the naked eye. So that's probably one of the worst things. There's nothing you can do to reverse it. Um, keeping them out of a trunk of a car where it's extremely hot or in a car, it'll, it'll deteriorate the rubber bands. And in some cases, it can actually melt them onto the lines. Uh, keeping basically your parachute in a cool, dry, dark place off the floor. If you're going to be flying someplace, say, oh, well, I'm flying a glider. and I'll, I'm going to just leave it in there for hours before I fly again. Or I park my airplane to go in to get a cup of coffee and they just leave it in the seat. When I fly, I cover it up with a carrying bag or I put it on the floor. I want to give it as much protection. And if you do that properly and have it serviced on a regular basis or properly storing it if you're not going to use it for, say, more than six months, like opening it and removing the rubber band, there's no reason why you should not get 20 years service life. And of course, keeping it out of grease and dirt. Uh, example would be people throw it in the trunk of their car and they didn't realize they had battery cables in there that have you have battery acid on it. That's instant death on a parachute. And these are things that I see on a, not a, fortunately not on a, a daily basis, but over the years I've seen a lot of equipment ruined by those. UV damage and extreme heat are probably the worst. Sunny or cloudy. Rainy or bright. Day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. 
Garmin SVT. Synthetic Vision Technology. One of the things that we should watch out for that means 180 days or not, we better send this thing to the rigger to get it checked. Anytime you get a parachute wet, yeah, it, it should be sent to the parachute rigger, mm -hmm. and I've had people say, "Well, I just opened it up and hung it up in the shade and the sun." Well, now you're exposing it to UV damage. Right. Nylon on the canopy, if you leave it out in the sun for about three weeks, just daily, sun up, sun down. Within three weeks, it's like a wet Kleenex. This material here on the paraphernalia is Cordura. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much waterproof and most of the containers that parachute companies make. Now there are areas where it can slip down in the water, but you need to, to watch it and, you, and, and dry it off and, and in that case, or if you get anything suspicious on it, then you should probably at least call your parachute rigger and ask them, says, hey, I got a problem here. See, when I pack a parachute and I, I certify it, I'm, I'm saying it's good for 180 days. Mm -hmm. When I pack it and I hand it to you, as soon as you shut the door and leave my office, it's your responsibility that it can hopefully go the whole 180 days, but that's just the maximum time. And it's your job in between to store it properly. And, and, and the other thing that you can do is, is a, to make sure that your parachute's reliable uh, is make sure that you pick a parachute rigger that's very familiar with particularly the round parachutes. I'm not saying don't go to a skydiving place, there are certainly fine riggers here, but many of them might not have the proper facilities and they may be only more familiar with the skydiving equipment. So get, be comfortable with who you pack your parachute and I also encourage you to pull the rip cords. Take the parachute out, look at it, make it familiar with the steering handles and then hand them the parachute and pick it up a few days later and then when you become, and of course attend one of my seminars, you know, I mean I do these all over the United States, and I encourage you. My seminars are free, but uh, you, you walk away with, I hope, a lot of knowledge. A lot of people say, well, I attended one five years ago. No, these are reoccurring training things. I'm giving one here you know, at ICAS in a, in a couple of days. And a lot of the people have attend them every year. I go up to Dan's place up in Seattle, up at Arlington. I'll be going up in January here. And the purpose is uh, to recurring training. The pilots are getting ready for the next season, and they said, oh, let's get a refresher course. And, of course, you usually go away with hopefully learning a little something new. And uh, I learned something, too. It keeps me current. Alan, thanks so much. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.